<laughs> yep, just stand, 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 keeping going. All right, Hello, Firestorm Facebook family from all over the place. The week of Thanksgiving will be going on live in just a, about two minutes. Give t people time to get on and get that notice on your phone that Firestorm United is now live. And we appreciate you. It's always fun to see a lot of my friends people I know now that tune in every single week. It's always, it's, it's like comforting to know that, hey, Calvin's out there and Brian's out there and Steven's out there and, you know, just you, all you regulars. So, are coming on now. So, no guest tonight. Just me. There he is. Calvin is watching. Calvin, before you came on, I was just saying how comforting it is to always know every week that there's a few people that I can just trust that are always on there. And it's so comforting to know Calvin's watching and Brian's on there and Steven tunes in. And, you know, there's a few others that we always know are um, supporting and I just feel back up or something. So I appreciate you. So no guests tonight, just me. Um, and we are about to start. saying a prayer to go to heaven when you die, but a prayer to get heaven into you right now. Have you ever wondered what Jesus meant when he said believers would do greater works than he did? Prepare to be inspired and equipped as you hear regular Christians just like you share their stories of how the Lord is using them to be his love in action. These folks are seeing that love transform the people they encounter as a normal part of their daily lives. And now, Firestorm Live with your host, Scott Gilbert. Good evening, my friends. Firestorm Live show coming at you every Tuesday. We're so thankful for your time, and we're going to make it worthwhile. Tonight is always, every show is exciting. Tonight is going to be especially fun. You know, I have a lot of guests, and I have a lot of wonderful guests. Every single one of our guests is just what I call a normal person. They're a regular believer, love Jesus, and I find that they're very relatable because they are just like you, just like me. Well, tonight... No guest, just me. I get to equip. I get to encourage. I get to share some testimonies of things that God has been doing in our life, my wife and I, and in my life. I get to share, uh, you know, I don't often get to share the kind of the things that are in my normal day to day. And, and as we get into some of these really exciting God stories, because that's really what they are, we're just making him famous. Jesus said, if I be raised up, I'll call all men to myself. So we just like to make him famous. You know, as we share these, it's always tempting to listen like a spectator. And I want to encourage you now, as you listen to this, this is just a, a week in the life, really, of, of me. As you hear these, this is available to absolutely every single believer. And I want them to spur you on. I want to provoke you. I'm not, I want them to just encourage you that the Lord is waiting on us to activate. We're not waiting on him to do anything. And as we step out and we be eager to love and we encourage people that the Lord sees them and they have an encounter with Jesus who is alive and loves them and we give them that encounter, you will see years of pain wash away in a moment. You'll see injuries and supernatural healings in an instant blow away 20 years of pain and suffering that you could know nothing about. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Well, I'm a carrier of that Spirit. If you pray to receive Jesus as your Lord and given Him your life, the word says that you are a carrier of that same spirit. The very spirit that rose Jesus from the dead lives in you. Don't you know you, are, you yourselves are God's temple and his spirit lives in you? So the Firestorm broadcast is all about just giving you examples of what that looks like in a day-to-day, moment-by-moment basis of regular people. So I've had some kind of cool, exciting testimonies in the last week, really. This is over about the last nine days. 
Uh, I was out of town. If you heard last week's show, it was the first recording we've done. This is the first time we didn't do a live show because I was out of town. I had to be in Orlando, Florida, had some business down there, um, and I couldn't be here. So we aired a show last week from my friend Robbie Dawkins, and it was a fiery show. It was just wonderful. I'm getting a lot of feedback from that show. And if you didn't get a chance to hear it last week, it is on our website. You know, Firestorm United can be found at firestormunited.org. You can look on old shows and you can see all of them. They go all the way back. You can just click on the one. So the one last week, if you didn't get to see it, didn't hear it, didn't pay attention, weren't available, uh, I really encourage you to take a listen to that. It will just build your faith. It'll just build you that the Lord has so much for all of us. And it's way more than just saying a prayer to go to heaven when we die and then white knuckling waiting for that to happen until we get some expectation of fullness. Well, if that's the Christian life to you, then that makes death your salvation. And that's not the way it is. What if it's not I say a prayer to go to heaven, but I say a prayer to get heaven into me right now? And then, as the Lord manifests himself through me for the rest of my life, I go about being his hands and feet to hurting people and scatter seed all my days. What if it's really just about scattering seed? So, our scripture, I have a couple of scriptures, but we probably all know the parable of the farmer scattering seed. It's in Mark 4, it's in Matthew 13. It's basically the kingdom of God is this. It's like a farmer scattering seed. And the farmer scatters seed and it falls on different kinds of surface. And For our purposes tonight, the idea is that the, the kingdom of God is just simply scattering seed. And it says that there's going to be some that will scatter and seed, the sowers, and there'll be some that are reap, that will reap. And the Holy Spirit gets the harvest. It's really exciting. But he says, you know, you'll actually reap where you didn't sow. <laughs> and that's what's really exciting. You know, we have people that are, are out there that reap a lot and they reap so much that there are conference speakers and whatnot but they're just reaping what other people sowed other people sowed way before and they just get to reap i don't know that the there's one greater than the other it's just simply we have to work together and my heart is to encourage you to be seed sowers and scatterers of seed all the time that's what our testimonies are about so uh, a day in the life. Let me kind of share some things that just happened recently with me. So I was uh, I was actually out of town. Like I said, I was in Orlando, Florida, and I was down there. And uh, my parents, my mom and dad were down there and got to spend some time with them. And I was just out on a walk in a neighborhood uh, with my mom. You know, it's beautiful down there this time of year. It was We were just out walking. And we're walking in this neighborhood around the lake. Done it many times before. And this truck drives up really slowly, comes up on us, rolls down the window, you know, big, you know, solid um, pickup, four-wheel drive, and rolls the window down. And there's this really old lady at the wheel, and she leans over and she says, excuse me, when I turn my car on, I feel like I heard some strange noise. Do you hear anything? Well, I didn't, and, you know, sadly, she's asking the wrong person because that's not my skill set. But she said, can you walk along beside me and just listen and see if you hear anything? And, I, of course, I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, well, does she want to ride? Does she want to get in? So she's talking to my mom, who's with me. So, um, so mom gets in the truck with this n nice little lady, and we go, you know, 100 feet down the road, and I hear nothing. And she says, well, maybe it's on the other side. So I go over the other side, and I'm walking along as she's idling down the road and hear nothing. And so I'm leaning in the window right there, and her name was Evelyn. And Evelyn shared that she's a widow. She's in her mid to late 80s. I don't remember exactly. Um, and, you know, she's got this problem with her vehicle and I heard nothing well and it's a new it's a new truck super high technology really opulent nice vehicle high end and I as I'm leaning in the window I said to her I said well you know these vehicles are really really smart if there's something wrong it's going to be a light on the dash it's going to say check engine it might look like a wrench it'll it'll tell you if it if it's unhappy 
and I noticed that there was nothing on, no lights. And I said, I don't see anything, so I'm sure it seems that it's fine. And she thanked me. And, uh, you know, she and mom talked in the car for two, three minutes as this relationship is unfolding. So as we're leaving, we're about done. And I just said to her, I said, well, thank you for the opportunity to, to help you if I could. Hey, uh, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus. Can I pray for you for anything? And she just immediately volunteers. She says, oh, yes, thank you. Oh, my back. And she leans forward a little bit, and she grabs onto her lower back, and she gives me the backstory of how she was, you know, several years ago, she was in a Jeep and bouncing along and this, and she hurt her back, and it got better and went away, but then it came back, and they don't know why, and nobody can fix it, and she's going to physical therapy, and it's just getting worse and worse. She shares all this with me. And I said to her, oh, oh, Miss Evelyn, you are in luck because the Lord sent you to me today. I said, it is my normal to see the Lord touch people. He loves you so much. It is my norm to see him heal people a couple times a week. So this is no small thing. This is the Lord. I try to just build faith with, with a, setup, a setup like that. Because you want them to be expecting. You want them to be expecting the Lord. So I said, yeah, uh, I'm gonna, we're going to pray for you right now. The Lord is going to touch your back. He loves you so much. Um, do you mind if I put a hand on your back? Well, she absolutely was good with that. She leans forward. I put my hand just kind of gently on her shoulder, and she, she's like, no, 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 lower. She has me move down. It's kind of in the center, right, low. And she puts my, you know, gets my, put my hand right on the spot. Pray a quick prayer. Something, you know, in 10 seconds, something to the effect of, Father, you love Evelyn. Of all the people in the world, you connected us today. And I believe, Lord, it's because by your stripes we were healed. So I thank you, Lord, right now for Holy Spirit presence to fill my sister. And on the authority of Jesus Christ, I command all pain get out of her back right now. So I start speaking to the back. I'm not commanding God. I'm thanking God. But then I start commanding the body. So I tell the body, all muscles be softened now in Jesus' name. All pain get out to the glory of our great king. And she thanks me, and I ask her to check it. And no matter how many times I do this, I've never found anybody who is comfortable with check it. They're always surprised. They're always, they're always do it, but nobody ever has a grid for that. I said, oh, no, 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 can you check it? Do you notice anything going on in your body? And she's moving forward and backward. You know, she's in a car seat, driver's seat. She's moving forward, backward, side to side. And she's like, you know, it does feel better. You know, wow, yeah, it feels different. And then she gets to a certain point and she goes, oh, no, still hurts right there. And I said, okay, don't hurt yourself. We'll pray again. And we prayed a second time. And a lot of people, are you're hearing that, and you're like, wait a second, what do you mean you have to pray a second time? Doesn't the first time work? Honestly, probably 80% of the time, it's the second prayer where I really see traction. The first one maybe gets it started, or we see nothing at all. And it's the second prayer, and I think it's a little bit like leaning in a, into a door. Like, okay, do you really want to push this door? Do you really, are you serious? Um, you can't just stand back like an electric eye and wait for it to open when you get close to it. You've got to lean into it. This is what faith looks like. The way faith, faith manifests in my experience is when we, we push on the door. We lean into it a second time. So I prayed a second time. I just put my hand on her shoulder, uh, and I said, Lord, I just thank you so much for your presence. I thank you for Holy Spirit power and any spirit of affliction. I command you to let her go. Get out right now on the authority of Jesus Christ. All pain go. All nerves be healed. All tendons, all muscle be softened right now in the authority of Jesus Christ. And I asked her to check it again. And she's moving around, and she moves the same direction. It doesn't hurt this time. And I did, we didn't belabor it. She thanked me. Uh, she started praying along with me the second time. You can tell she's a believer. You can feel, you know this, you can feel the Spirit when you've walked with Him for a, for a time. You know what the Spirit feels like. And the Spirit was all over this lady. It was beautiful. So um, she's, we're done. I step away. She's driving off. She gets about five car lengths away, and she hollers out the window, 
thank you, it feels so much better. And then she keeps driving. Now she's like 10 car lengths away. She's really far. And she's hollering out the window, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, she did have a little span, a little accent, like a Southern accent like that. And uh, you know, my mom and I, we just looked at each other and said, this is so cool. You know, this is the Christian life that, this is what scattering seed looks like. This is available to every single believer, and it doesn't have to manifest in a supernatural event. It doesn't have to manifest in healing every time. It doesn't have to be a miracle every time. That's We don't chase miracles. Actually, miracles chase us. At the end of the Gospel of Mark, it says these signs will follow. This is Mark 16. These signs will follow those who believe. They will cast out devils. They will heal the sick. They'll raise the dead. They'll cleanse the lepers in my name. So these signs will follow us. The miracles chase us. We don't chase them. And the thing that I learned from this lady in the truck, Eva, um, Evelyn, last week, was you almost don't have to really do anything in that you don't have to make anything happen. You don't have to strive. You don't have to look for people limping in the Home Depot and chase them down. Sir, sir, can I pray for your knee? I mean, you can do that, but just don't be weird. <laughs> we really just need to know who we are as sons and daughters and know that this Christian life is about scattering seed every day. This is what the Firestorm live broadcasts are about. This is what the Firestorm United ministry is all about. We want to encourage you and show you models of what it looks like of regular people that are seed scatterers every day. And yes, they are seeing the harvest. They are seeing they're sowing, but they're also reaping. They're seeing people saved in business lunches. They're seeing people healed everywhere in the grocery store um you know and and what i was saying you don't need to do anything the story i just shared we're just walking through a neighborhood and someone drives up to us and rolls the window down and asks a question and the lord just supernaturally sets it up i can't tell you how many times i have been surprised by the lord and it's so thrilling so if that is new to you in your christian life that's something you say wow that would be really amazing yeah, I'm going to tell you, it's available. If your heart is right, the Lord is going to go before and prepare the way. And he'll send people to you. Just ask him. I remember my wife and I were in a coffee shop once. And we were sitting there just having breakfast together. Just the two of us at a table. Uh, we were not talking about things of the Lord that I remember. We were certainly not being loud. We were just having a breakfast together. It was during the week. Um... And this coffee shop, it's pretty busy. There's people in and out. And this man comes over to our table, you know, 30-something young guy, businessy, sort of casual attire. He stands there at our table, shift his weight back and forth. He says, um, uh, I don't usually do this. Um, this is really uncomfortable for me. But um, I feel like the Lord just said to me, could you pray for me? I'm like, yeah, buddy, absolutely, that's awesome. What do you have going on? How can I pray for you? And he shares with me, well, you know, I'm down here in Virginia Beach and my family's up in Northern Virginia. I commute, I go home on the weekends. I got, you know, a couple kids, a little girl, she's three years old, my wife. It's really hard for us back and forth in my business. He shares challenges with his business. And I was able to pray for him and just assure him that the Lord sees him and he loves him. Okay, I didn't do anything. I don't have a sign on me that says free prayer. I know guys that do that, and go for it if that works for you. Um, but for me, it's really exciting when you're just doing life and the Lord knows your heart, so he sends hurting people to you. This is available. This is, I think, what the Christian life should look like. And it's really, really thrilling. You know, a couple days later, I was in a grocery store this week, last week, end of last week. And uh, as I walk into the grocery store, there's a young guy, young, 20-something, wearing a contractor shirt, and he's walking, very limping. He's, he's, in a, he's got a problem walking. 
And I walk past and I kind of see him and I don't say anything to him. I don't want you to think that I pray for every person I pass in the hallway all the time. Because there's always, 100% of the time in my experience, some pushback. Oh, it's awkward. Oh, he's in a hurry. Oh, they look mean. Oh, they're probably already a believer. Oh, I don't know what to say. 100% of the time, that goes through my head. So if you are waiting for that to go away, it will never go away. Because we have an enemy, a very strong supernatural enemy, that is actively opposed to things of the Lord. And he will never have you pray for anyone in the name of Jesus. He does not want out there in any way. He's going to try to shut it down. And he will drop things into your path, into your heart, into your mind to tell you not to do it. And that's exactly what happened with me. So this young man with the very bad limp and the electrical contractor shirt, he walks past me. Okay, well, I get my stuff. I go get in line. I'm standing in the checkout. You know, there's only one checkout open. Well, would you know it? He comes right up behind me, gets right in line behind me. Okay. When stuff like that happens, I just, from experience, I know that's the Lord. And now I have an obedience question. Am I going to be obedient or am I not going to be obedient? Because, you know, the Lord didn't tell us, he, you know, he never told us to pray for anybody. But he did say, go into all the world, make disciples. He did say, as you go, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils, raise the dead. He didn't tell us to pray for the sick. He said to heal the sick. He told us to raise the dead. Well, 100% of the time, I can't raise any dead people. 100% of the time, I can't heal anyone. There's a zero chance that I can heal anyone. So why does the Lord ask us to do things that we are absolutely, completely incapable of doing? I think it's because when we step into that in obedience and faith, because I think obedience and faith are hand, by, hand in hand, when we step into that obediently in faith, that's when the Lord manifest and shows up because we're being sons and daughters that are following our father's uh, commands. So this young man with the, with the busted up leg, uh, we're standing in line and I just turned to him and I said, hey man, what happened to your, what happened to your, uh, your ankle? I said ankle. It was actually not his ankle, it was his knee. And he said, oh, it's my knee. And, uh, and I just shared with him, I said, yeah, man, I broke two bones in my leg a few years ago. I was in a boot cast. I know what it feels like, so I'm sensitive to other hurting people. I just notice what you do to your knee. And he shares with me, he's like, oh, I was climbing on a ladder, and I fell off the ladder, and my leg kind of got stuck and twisted, and it just wrenched my knee. And I looked at him like, oh, man, that's terrible. Does it hurt a lot? And he's like, oh, yeah, it hurts all the time. And I said, hey, can I just pray for your knee real quick? I said it just like that, real, real deadpan. Can I just pray for your knee real quick? And he takes a two or three seconds to process. And he says, yeah. And I said, hey, I promise it will not be long and it will not be weird. Okay. So I just put my hand on his shoulder and his name was Mason. And I just prayed for Mason. I said, I thank you, Lord, for my brother Mason. I thank you for Holy Spirit power. And right now, in the authority of Jesus Christ, I command knee be healed. All pain go right now. Complete movement return on the authority of Jesus Christ. That Mason would know that you love him and that you see him in Jesus' name. And uh, I asked him, this is the check it part. What Can you check it? And uh, he thanks me. And I said, yeah, man, I do this all the time. I just you know Jesus lives in me. And I just like to let people know how much he, see, he loves you and he sees you. So that takes, what, five, seven, ten seconds to say all that. And I said, uh, hey, as you walk around today, you're going to notice that that's going to feel better. I just throw it out there. Some of you that might be listening are thinking, wow, that is incredibly bold. What is going to happen when it doesn't change and you wreck this guy's faith? Well, I'll tell you, you don't have the power to wreck their faith. Honestly, nobody expects to be healed. They have pretty much zero expectation that anything's going to change. So the question is not, what are you going to do if he doesn't get healed? The question is, what are you going to do when he does? How is that going to change him? How's that going to change you? So I said to him, hey, as you walk around today, you're going to notice that pain's going to go 
go away because uh, Jesus loves you. He'll touch your body. He'll heal you. And he, he heard me. And I said, you know, and by this time, it's my turn to check out. And I said to him, um, hey, do you, notice, do you notice anything going on in your knee? And he thinks for a minute and he says, it feels really tingly in there. And I'm like, yeah, man, that's Jesus. It's cool, right? <laughs> and I said, let me just pray one more time. So I prayed one more time, kind of seal it up. Remember I said, you got to kind of lean on the door. You just got to push a little bit. So he who began a good work will bring it to completion, the word says. I can't heal anybody. I don't have any expectation that I can. But I know that Jesus still heals because I see it all the time. So I put my hand on his shoulder and I'm just like, Father, I thank you for what you began. And I just speak complete and total restoration into this knee. You love Mason so much, Lord. Thank you for touching him right now. Knee be completely restored. All pain go in Jesus' name. And uh, by this time, I'm ready to pay. The girl's got my, you know, five or six items done and it's time to pay. So I put my credit card in, standard, standard experience. She hands me the receipt and she says, I want some of that. And I said, oh, do you have any pain in your body? And she's young. She's, you know, I mean, she's 20 maybe. She's young. She looks totally healthy. And she's like, no. She just wanted an impartation of Holy Spirit presence. She had just seen it. Now notice, Mason's not like skipping around the, the place. It's not like he's doing jumping jacks and saying, praise Jesus, my knee is healed. I haven't really had him check it. He's been just standing in line behind me. I don't know that anything's changed other than he says it feels tingly. And I know from experience that that's the Lord. The, the Lord moves in cool ways. Sometimes it feels warm. Sometimes it feels cold. Sometimes it feels like electricity tingling. And much of the time it feels abs like absolutely nothing. They feel nothing at all. But then once you get them to activate faith and check it, like Jesus said, stretch out your hand. Or Jesus said, pick up your mat and walk. Or Peter and John at the gate beautiful in Acts, they say to the, you know, the beggar, the silver and gold, I have none. But what I have, I give you in the authority, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, stand up. They help him up. And the word says that his ankles were strengthened when they helped him up. So there's just something about the activation of the person that I've seen. It's not dogmatic. It's not every single time. Um, but when they do involve themselves and invest, it seems that that faith along with my faith, along with Jesus' faith, because that's whose faith I have because he lives in me, uh, they all kind of triangulate and we see things. So this is why we always ask them to check it. So uh, the young woman, the, the checkout girl, says, I want some of that. And I ask her if she has any pain. She doesn't. And so I kind of go around the back, the side there at the, where you bag. And I just, I said, okay. Um, and I just put my hand on her shoulder. And I said, a quick, just a blessing. Father, I, I found out her name. Her name was Taylor. And I said, Father, I just thank you, Lord, so much that I could meet my sister Taylor today. And as I'm praying... I start getting like a little inkling or a vision or it's not like a vision vision. It's like just like a flash. Something plops into my brain. Um, and I've learned that that's the Lord. And it's really quiet. It's not fanfare. It's almost like uh, if you've ever been outside and, uh, you know, a feather or something is blowing on the wind. And it just barely brushes you as it blows past. You could so easily ignore it. But after you know what a feather brushing your skin feels like, the next time a feather brushes your skin, you can identify it. That's the way I experience in myself um, what we call words of knowledge or words of wisdom. They're really faint. It's a still, quiet voice. You could totally blow past it. And you could totally think, oh, that's just me. So as I put my hand on Taylor's shoulder and I just... Father, I thank you for my sister Taylor, and I thank you, Lord, for your presence to fill her. I always prayed for the manifest presence of God to fill them, that they would know that you love them and that you see them. So, Father, I thank you for manifest presence of God to fill her right now, in Jesus' name. And I get this picture in my head, and I said, Taylor, I just feel like the Lord is saying 
that you are a beloved daughter. He sees you like a ballerina dancing in the throne room. He's so pleased with you. He's so proud of you. He's a really good dad, and he loves you so much. And I just feel like every... So I just continue the prayer after that. And I said, Father, I just thank you that everybody that she talks to today, it would be your words that come out of her mouth, and everybody that sees her, that she looks at, they would see you in her eyes. In Jesus' name, amen. And all of that takes not 30 seconds, 20 seconds. And I looked at her, and she's crying gently. You know, she's tearing up more than, not like weeping, but she's tearing up. And that was it. I got my receipt, and I walked out. I get out in the parking lot, go to the car, put stuff in the car, and I see the guy, Mason, the electrical contractor with the busted-up knee. And he doesn't see me, see him. I mean, he's, but I see him walk across the parking lot and he is walking across the parking lot just as belabored as the first time that I saw him. I see no manifestation of healing. I can't, there's nothing to tell me that his knee is any better at all. And sometimes you hear things like that and you go, okay, well, it was a bust. No, it wasn't a bust because you just see what the Lord did there. I was able to let Mason know that God sees him and speak life and healing into his knee. And I'd still believe that a lot of times it just takes him a minute. Not hours, not days, not weeks. But as he moves on it throughout that day, it does, it's going to get better and it's going to stay better. But at that moment, we didn't see an instantaneous, supernatural, miraculous healing. But the Lord leveraged that connection for Taylor, the checkout girl. She saw me pray for him in a natural and comfortable way, right there in the grocery store, and she said, oh, I want that. I contend that there are people all around us every single day, especially now, with all of the stress and things that are going on in our world, especially now, they are dying for a touch by the Lord. And you have it. We have it. We can give it to them. And it doesn't mean that you have to give them a five-point sermon. In fact, don't. But they need to know that the Lord loves them and he sees them. And when you come in love and you're eager to love, you will see the Lord will manifest himself and you kind of don't have to make it happen. You don't have to do anything. That's one of my testimonies for tonight. You know, the Firestorm Live broadcast comes to you from 89.1 FM. The word in praise, we're coming to you from Cheriton, Virginia. And we're so thankful for this radio station because they took a chance on us. Honestly, if you listen to this station and others, you probably won't hear shows like mine. You probably won't hear moment by moment, real life testimonies of God stories of the Lord touching people. People don't share them. I don't know why. Maybe because they're not actually out there doing it. But this is a really unique show. And we want to equip and encourage you. You can find out more about our ministry, Firestorm United, on Facebook at Firestorm United and on our website, firestormunited.org. We are listener-supported. We are a nonprofit ministry like everybody else. I know. I know. I hate it. I hate it that I have to say that because everybody says that, right? Everybody's like, we want to have a ministry. Who's going to give us money? You know, the Lord has always carried us. And we're still here a year in. In fact, we're expanding and growing and doing other cool things, which I'll tell you about. But I believe that if you are, in my life, I've experienced this. If I am blessed, encouraged, and growing in something, and then I seed money into that, and I sow into that, whatever I'm sowing into, I just get a larger harvest. I always do. So if the Firestorm Live show is blessing you, encouraging you, we just encourage you to come alongside us. Our website, firestormunited.org, has all the links to donate. And uh, also old shows, previous shows, evidences we have for the various miraculous events we talk about on the show when we have them. You know, we don't walk around with a worship team in the background and a camera crew. That's weird. <laughs> but occasionally we do get uh, testimonies from people after they've been healed or... Uh, we do get video sometimes when other people record it and we don't know what's happening and they share it with us or still shots or whatever. And we put those out there. We put those on the website. You're welcome to take a look at it. Um, and I welcome skeptics because I can't heal anybody. 
but I see Jesus do it all the time. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus still heals. He just uses his kids to heal his other kids now. And uh, it's a really low bar. You just have to have your heart in the right place and trust him. And that's what the Firestorm live broadcast is all about, sharing those things. So the parable of the farmer scattering seed. We have this in Mark 4. We got this in Matthew 13. Super popular. You probably know it. It says the kingdom of God is like a farmer that went out to scatter seed. And the, the seed scattering is just letting people, I think it's putting Jesus on display. It's letting people have an encounter with him. It's not a five-point sermon, in my experience. And, you know, sometimes people say to me, they say, well, did you get them, you know, did you get them to receive the Lord? Did you get them, basically what they're saying is, did you get them to say the prayer at the back of the tract? No. No. Vast majority of time, I don't do that. And those of you that are, you know, old school evangelists, are you're just shocked to hear me say that. Oh, this is just anathema. You know what? My goal is not to get them to say a prayer to go to heaven. My goal is to get them an encounter with the risen Lord Jesus right now who's alive and leave them with that encounter. Because I know when they're processing that, and they're sitting in their house that night and they're processing it, and they're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, my back doesn't hurt anymore. I know I left them with an experience and Holy Spirit is going to minister to them in the deep parts of their heart that I could know nothing about when we just, you know, have a flyby in the grocery store. I'm, I'm just, I'm here and gone. I, you know, I'm not there for very long. Sometimes the Lord does give deeper insight and that's really cool, but the vast majority of times it is quick. So, but I know when they are sitting at home and they're contemplating, that was really unique. Wow, I felt something. Holy Spirit is going to convict their hearts. He's going to call them to himself. He's going to send other laborers along the path because that's what he does. I just get to sow. I'm sowing all the time. I'm just scattering. Scattering seed. Other people get to reap. Once in a while, I get to reap. You know, later in the week, Last week, actually, um, I, I was in Orlando, Florida for a couple of days. I had some business down there, uh, actually selling some property. And I have a realtor down there that, you know, she sold me the place 16 years ago. I haven't seen her since, but we reconnected. And, uh, you know, I had a really positive experience with her. Well, we're closing on this sale last week. And she's sitting, you know, she goes with me to closing. And we're sitting there doing all the paperwork. And she mentions at some point that uh, her knees are really bothering her. Her knees just started hurting in the last three or four months. They were fine, and now she can barely walk in the morning. She can't even go to the gym anymore, and she's afraid she has to have knee replacement. Well, she's barely 50, and she's athletic and healthy. And uh, so she shares that. We finished the real estate closing. We're leaving. She's thanking me, all the normal stuff, you know, stay in touch. And I said to her, I said, uh, hey, Tracy, uh, could I just pray for your knees real quick? We're in the elevator lobby, okay? We're in the lobby. There's like office building. There's two elevators on one side, two on the other, and people coming and going. And we're standing right there. And I said, could I just pray for your knee? We've never talked about things of the Lord. We've had a very business relationship. I mean, she knows that I'm a believer, um, but I've not made it an issue. And I said to her, can I pray for your knee real quick? I always say real quick. And she just softens. She's like, oh, yes, thank you. And now I have to build faith. Okay, so step two is you have to build expectation. Expectation is faith. Um, because if you say, yeah, you know, I, I'll pray for you. Maybe God will do something. I don't know. Sometimes he does. Most of the time he doesn't. I don't, you're not going to see anything. <laughs> you're just, you're ministering the spirit of unbelief at that point, who is a powerful spirit. So I just, I have to build expectation. I said, oh yeah, uh, I see people healed a lot. The Lord touches them. I can't heal anybody, but he loves you. And yeah, you let me pray for you. He'll touch your knees right now. That's what I put out there. And some of you say, oh my gosh, that's so bold. Yeah, that's why I see healing, I believe. Because I step into that in boldness. And yeah, I might spectacularly fall on my face in front of them. Maybe. But... I have been obedient to my father. 
who says, as you go, Jesus said, this is Matthew 10, as you go, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils, raise the dead. As you go, as you're doing your life, you don't have to target people, you don't have to strive, just go do life. So I'm in a real estate closing. My realtor says my knees hurt. Oh, so bad. Four months. Can't get any relief. Can't go to the gym. Hope I don't need knee replacement. We stand in this public elevator lobby. I put my hand on her shoulder. Uh, and then actually I did kneel down and put my hand on her to the side of her knee. Because she told me one hurt a lot worse than the other. And there's people coming and going. And that's odd. <laughs> that's not normal, right? Well, I don't belabor it. I don't have my hand in the air. I'm not making a scene. But the people that see that, they see someone praying for someone else. They can perceive what's going on. It increases faith. It increases their faith. It increases the faith of the recipient. If you keep it quick, don't belabor it and make it weird. Father, I thank you, Lord, so much that I had the opportunity to work with Tracy. You love her so much, Lord. She is your daughter. And I thank you, Lord, that on the cross you paid for our healing as well as our salvation. So I ask you, Lord, right now to get your victory. On the authority of Jesus Christ, I command all pain in her knees, get out now. All pain go. New tendons, new cartilage grow now on the authority of Jesus Christ. And I ask her to, she thanks me. And I say, yeah, okay, well, hey, and I always say, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> it's the lawyer in me. Hey, don't hurt yourself. But do you notice anything going on in your body? Can you check it? You know, I've never had anybody not check it. There is a curiosity factor. Um, always, 100% of the time, people do something to check it. Even the ones that want to like be snarky and be like, no, nope, nothing's changed, there's nothing at all. They always check it. So I said, can you check it? Don't hurt yourself. And she starts walking around this elevator lobby and she's kind of high stepping, picking her knee up and she's, she, t she probably walks around for five or six seconds, takes five or six steps, and you can see her processing. And she says, you know, it does feel better. Well, I jump right on that. I want to activate faith more. And I say, oh, yeah, that's Jesus. It's really cool, right? He still heals. He just uses, now he just uses his kids to heal his other kids. He's touching your body right now. And I let that drop. And I see where it goes. And she's like, and I said, well, how bad does it hurt compared to what it was before? And she explains to me it's about half as bad as it was before. One knee is completely zero pain, and the other one is about 50% better. And I said, okay, well, can I pray one more time? I promise it won't be weird. <laughs> and she totally receives. And I pray right there again, Father, I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name for your spirit to fill my sister Tracy. Manifest presence of God, come now. Be glorified in her body. Any spirit of infirmity, I command you to get out. Let her go right now. Get out in Jesus' name. Body be healed. All pain go and stay out in Jesus' name. Something like that. That's not verbatim, but those are the high points I hit. And I asked her to check it. And she's moving around more. And she's like, you know, it's feeling even better. And I said, yeah, it's Jesus. You're going to walk around. You're going to find that this, ha this is going to be better. And the Lord's touching. He loves you so much. I didn't get her in a headlock and make her say the prayer on the back of the track. I left her with that experience. So we leave. The next day, I get a text from her thanking me for the sale and all that, just total business. And I texted back, I'm, you know, nice niceties, nicey, nicey, nicety. And I said, hey, uh, how are your knees doing? And she texts me back and she says, uh, you know, they were so great yesterday. I woke up this morning and they hurt just as bad as ever. Oh no, what do I do? right? Is that a botched healing? Is this guy not qualified? What had happened there? Here's what I found. You got to lean into it. We have a decided enemy, a supernatural enemy on the level of an archangel. The archangel Michael, uh, Lucifer's an archangel, the same level as Michael. He is not equal to God by any stretch of the word. He's a created being 
but he has the same supernatural power and authority of, say, Michael the Archangel, Gabriel. I mean, these are powerful, powerful angels. And he has a ready and willing labor supply that is ever increasing. So he's got lots of little minions that can gather data and they have quite a network of, uh, of agents. And he, I've learned that when we pray for people, it's not just healing, but when we pray for people in any way and we transfer the love of the Lord to people, it is warfare. This is what warfare looks like. It's an upside-down kingdom. In the new kingdom, the new covenant that Jesus came to, to herald, weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not bombs and missiles, but they have supernatural power for the demolishing of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are love, joy, peace, kindness, healing. These are weapons. Because when you see somebody healed the first time, I'll always remember the first time I saw somebody healed. It was in public, and it was really dramatic. Um, in my mind's eye, it's a party. I mean, it's beautiful. There's, um, you know, there's like sunlight piercing through the clouds, and there's a rainbow, and there's pixie dust, and there's butterflies and dolphins jumping through the rainbow, and you just imagine this beautiful the hallelujah chorus in the background. It's, it's really glorious. But the Lord showed me that on the flip side, the enemy sees carnage. He sees his realm being ripped apart. He sees his agents being crushed. He sees blood and carnage in his realm when we come in with this level of, heal, of power. Healing is, is power and healing is warfare. So it's warfare. We have an enemy that wants to steal, kill, and destroy and it's just not easy. It's not, he just doesn't just roll over. So you have to push on the door. So Tracy tells me the next day, oh, yesterday was great. My knees were really good. But today, they're just as bad as ever. Okay. What does that do? Is that made to rattle my faith? Nope, because I have seen the Lord do so many cool things. So I just hammer out longhand a text to her. Um, just like I were praying. And it said something like, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you love Tracy. I thank you that you began a good work in her knee. And we come against, I say we at this, so that when she reads it, she's connecting, right? I don't say I. When I do a text, I say we. That way, the person that is receiving it and reading it, they kind of read it prayerfully. They join with me. Whenever two or more are gathered, um, Jesus is there in our midst. So I use... I use the pronoun we. Right now, Lord, I thank you. We come before you, and we thank you, Lord, for healing power to flow through these knees. We come against the spirit of affliction. We bind him, and we command him to stop manifesting right now. All pain go in Jesus' name. And I send that text. And I don't follow up, you know, 30 seconds later and say, what do you know? What do you have? What do you have? Is anything changing? You know, what's up? I, I just, I don't, I don't need that. I just want it. I want her to have a, an experience with the Lord. So I wait later in the day. She texts me. She's like, Oh my gosh, my knees are so much better. <laughs> she texts me the next day. My knees are so much better. Please keep praying for me. I just don't want to have knee surgery or replacement or whatever. And I was able to respond back and say, and just kind of teach her about faith. It's a substance. It's the, it's the evidence of things not seen. It's like a muscle. You got to start using it. And when you first start using it, it hurts. You don't want to use it anymore. Just like going to the gym. But if you just activate in faith and believe God and trust him when you don't see it, it looks like, I said, it looks like this, Tracy. When, you, when you're feeling the pain in your knees, you thank him for healing your knees. You thank him for total restoration of your knees that you're not going to have surgery while you're feeling the pain in Jesus' name. I said, that's what faith looks like. You push back against that door. So I sent her that text. And last thing I heard, she's doing great. Now, all of these are teaching points. They're available for every single believer. You know, nobody ever taught me in the church all my years. All my years as a believer, all my years, I grew up in the church. I 
did everything. I did it all right. But I really never saw the presence of God manifest in any tangible way other than, you know, really powerful praise and worship services. You can feel the spirit. Um, I can feel the presence. You tear up a little bit. Other people do. That's beautiful. But it wasn't until I started praying for people in the marketplace, in the public square, that I learned that you see way more outside of the church than you do inside the church. So I would just encourage all of our listeners right now that there is this awesome adventure ahead of you. And it starts by you just stepping out in love and engaging somebody in your normal life and work into that, hey, how can I pray for you? I don't ask, can I pray for you? I ask, how can I pray for you? Another equipping point is sometimes I say, like I just said this to a person in CVS or Rite Aid or something last week, I was in there, and the checkout girl, and I thank her, and I say, hey, here's just a thing that I do. Hey, as I drive away, whenever I meet a new person that I'm not going to see again, hey, as I drive away, I'm going to pray for you. How can I pray for you? So first of all, I cast the net. I just say, hey, as I drive away, I'm going to pray for you. So it's a wide net. I mean, she knows it's not going to be awkward. And uh, I've never had anybody turn me down, ever. I've 100% of the time, I've had people share something. Sometimes it's really innocuous. It's like, oh, you know, just, just, just for good health. What, you know, something super basic. But I at least get to let them know, yeah, hey, as I drive away, um, I'm going to pray for you. How can I pray for you? And I leave them with this. I'm like, oh, yeah, the Lord loves you. He sees you. Thank you for the opportunity to pray for you. And I leave. Because I know, and people say, oh, well, how come you didn't, you know, how come you didn't lead them in the prayer? How come you didn't do that? You know, I just feel like there's a lot of times where we're not going to see the birth every single time. And, and those of us that want to see the birth every time, I want to caution you that the Holy Spirit is given the ministry of the harvest. None of us are. In fact, the Lord says to pray that he would send, the, that the Lord of the harvest, the Father, would send more harvesters, laborers, out into the field. It's interesting. He doesn't say pray for a bigger harvest. He says pray for more harvesters. Somehow, as we get out there as and make ourselves available as harvesters, Holy Spirit harvests more. But it's not about you doing anything. It's about you being available. And it's about you having the focus of knowing who you are, that you are the very carrier of God. You are the very carrier of the presence. The presence of God in the Old Covenant was the Ark. You remember Indiana Jones. It's the Ark of the Covenant. That's the presence of God. Well, in the New Covenant, it says that we are the carrier of the presence. We are the Ark. Everywhere you go, he goes with you if you're a believer. If you've prayed in fullness to receive Jesus and submitted your life to him, I'm not talking about just pray a prayer to go to heaven when you die. That's a prayer to get our needs met. And we have taken the glory and the beauty of the gospel in the Western church, and we have degenerated it down to a prayer to get our needs met. And then when we don't feel like our needs are met, then we get an attitude with the Lord well, like, hey, come on, do your part. I did mine. Where are you? And we have this attitude with our Father. What if it was never intended that we say a prayer to go to heaven when we die, although we're going to go there because Jesus said, Behold, I, I go to prepare a place for you. If it weren't so, I would tell you my Father's house has many rooms. I go to prepare a place for you. Okay, that's awesome. The Lord made it pretty clear that that's going to happen. But what if the relationship element of the Christian faith is not, I say a prayer to get my needs met and go to heaven, but it's I say a prayer to get heaven into me and to be transformed that I look more like Jesus every single day and sound more like Jesus every single day. And every time people see me and hear my words, they hear him. What if that's the goal of the Christian life instead of get my needs met, say the prayer, go to heaven when I die, white-knuckle this Christian life for the next 70 or 80 years 
Because we all know what happens when you white knuckle something. Eventually your grip's gonna crack. And you're gonna have an attitude feeling like you did your part, how come God's not doing his? As soon as things don't go your way, hey, you know, I did everything right, I tithed, I, I prayed, I was a worship leader and uh, my business still failed, my wife still left me, my kids still went crazy, my, you know, whatever. And we have this attitude, Lord, where are you? Instead of a prayer that would put you in a position of knowing you're now a son or a daughter, you can boldly enter the throne room and receive grace in time of need. But it's not about just waiting to die and go to heaven. It's about manifesting him every day, everywhere you go, because he lives in you and he really, really loves all the people around you. Everybody that you see, Jesus paid a price for. He paid such a high price, and it's not just for us to sit in a church and to do church and the tithe, and um, those are all beautiful. We need to do those things, but that is not the end of the Christian life. The end of the Christian life is everywhere you go every day, he flows out of you. And what it looks like is what the Firestorm Live broadcast tries to show you and model so you can find us at firestormunited.org. There's a lot of great shows. All of our shows have practical teaching points and really cool manifested testimonies of, of Jesus manifesting in the moment and touching people. We have, we have testimonies of demons jumping out of people uh, in the UPS store, in the Starbucks. I had one in my living room about a month or two ago. Um, it, this happens. This absolutely happens. We have resurrection testimony. We have blind eyes open testimony. We have lots of healing. We've got cancer going away in a moment. The Lord is still doing these things. And what's going to happen when the sleeping giant of the church gets a vision that in the last days I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. My sons and daughters will prophesy. My old men will dream dreams and my young men will see visions. It's happening. The old men are dreaming dreams, and it's not because they're napping all the time. It's because the Lord is giving them vision and dreams, and they're passing it down to the younger generation who are getting the vision that the older generation is saying, I just feel like the Lord showed me. He has a plan for your life. Hey, are you, um, do you like building stuff? Are you like an engineer? Um, I feel like God is saying that um, he's going to just put wisdom in your mind to understand how things come together. And, and, and is, does that make any sense to you? And the young person says, oh, my gosh, yes, I love it. I, when I was a little kid, I loved building with Legos. And now I like, you know, building engines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the Lord shows me stuff about people because he loves you. And I just feel like the Lord is saying that he's going to put a, a, a wisdom in you and that you're going to do amazing things in the field of engineering. What if that's what the Christian life looks like as you're cruising around the world? And you don't have to get a word of knowledge every single time. In fact, I almost never get a word of knowledge. I, at least never ahead of time, sometimes when I just... And like actively praying for the person, my hands on their shoulder, and I kind of get a flash in my, my mind's eye of something, and I'll say that. But you don't have to have a word before you activate. If you're waiting on that, you'll probably not activate. I always tell people it's a little bit like, I want my son to take out the trash without being asked. He already knows to take out the trash. We already know what the Lord has for us. He says, go into all the world, make disciples. As you go, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, cast out devils, raise the dead. He's already told us what to do. We just need to step into it. And if you're waiting for your father to tell you every time to take out the trash, you're acting like a, you're acting like a servant. You're not acting like a son. I want my son to take out the trash without being asked because now he's invested in the family economy and he's actually participating in the, in the household. I don't have to ride him all the time. I feel like our Heavenly Father is saying the same thing. So as you go, in love, ask the Lord to give you eyes to see people the way he does. And as you're walking through the grocery store, right before Thanksgiving, there's a million people and you have an opportunity just to connect with someone over the peaches or the whatever, thought prayer, Father, you love this person. What do you have for them? And something might pop in there, but even if it doesn't, you can just say, hey, 
it's uh, holidays are really tough for a lot of people. Okay, can I just pray a blessing on you before we go? I've never had anybody tell me no. And right there, really quick, you've got to be short. Ten seconds. Father, I just thank you for my brother here. In Jesus' name, I just fill you with the presence of God. I thank you to fill in, Lord, that he knows that you're there, that you love him, and that you see him. That you would go before and prepare the way. You love him so much. In Jesus' name. And then go buy your, your peaches and off you go. And you will see, as you work that muscle, more. the Lord will bring more and more. You don't even have to do anything. You're just walking down the street and somebody pulls up their car next to you and you get to pray from their back gets healed. Or you're sitting in a coffee shop and someone stand, walks over to your table and awkwardly says, I don't usually do this, but uh, God told me, hey, could you pray for me? You don't have to do really anything other than be obedient and available. And the Lord will do it. So we thank you for listening to the Firestorm Live broadcast. Check us out again. Find us at firestormunited.org. Thank you for the opportunity to encourage you. Have a great Thanksgiving. We pray blessings on your family and that you would step into the fullness of everything Jesus paid a price for. See you next week. Thank you for listening to Firestorm Live with your host, Scott Gilbert. Presented every Tuesday from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. by Firestorm United. A collaboration of activated all right. members just like you. I covered all my notes. This is how I do it, in case you're wondering. The high-tech nature of my show. Yeah, the uh, the iPad has the scriptures I, I need on it. But uh, I hammer out just some longhand really quick. This testimony, that testimony, uh, some reap where they didn't sow. Farmer scattering seed, Mark 4, Matthew 13. This is how I do these things. You know, the word says that let he who speaks know he speaks the oracles of God. Isaiah says, Lord, as I open my mouth, fill it. I have learned from doing the show for the last year that the Lord just always glorifies himself. You kind of don't need, no, need to know where you're going if you just trust him, and he will fill it. And it's so fun. It's so fun. So thank you for listening. We will be back next week. Always a pleasure, and uh, always thankful for our these uh, regular listeners that you guys are always on. Thank you for running with us. Really cool stuff coming in the new year. I'll tell you about it next week. Blessings.